Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to connect MailChimp and EasyCSV so you can bulk import data from spreadsheet files. Uh, the first use case we support is importing a bunch of data into an audience uh, or email list. Uh, so, you know, you're know, you going to have a spreadsheet, let's say you have a spreadsheet of a ton of email addresses you want to import in, uh, to an existing list, and we let you add new people or, or update existing. So I'm going to show just a simple example. I have this spreadsheet with one row with Mickey Mouse on it. And I want to add them. I want to add Mickey to a list. You can name your columns whatever you want in your file. I just named them this so it's easy to map. What what Easy CSV allows you to do is take these columns and map them to the Mailchimp columns. Uh, so you'll see here these are going to be kind of my merge tags or uh, my merge tags here. So like I can put those in email templates. So let's take this spreadsheet and uh, make a new import page. So usually what you'll have is you'll have a uh, you'll have like an actual file. So you can just take that file and drag it here, you know, and you can do mail. You'll name this import page we're making um, Mailchimp test. You can uncheck any columns you don't care about, like you're not going to use in Mailchimp, or you can leave them all. You'll do next. You'll select Mailchimp as your destination, and you have your import page. So. Once you finish setting up, you can just drag files on here or use this to go get files in a regular cadence, which I'll also show you. Uh, the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have this red banner, but you'll need to connect your MailChimp account. There'll be a button there. You just click it. You'll go to MailChimp. You'll approve EasyCSV. You'll come back. And then the, la the second thing you have to do is uh, choose the list or audience you want to send all the data into. So you can either click this button uh, or you can go to the import flow. The import flow is just kind of a diagram of how everything works. So it, it talks about how you're going to get the files like you can you know drag and drop on your import page you can get it from an embed form on your website you can email the files like if you get a file of uh, emails regularly you can just forward the email with the CSV or XLS attached or we can go get the file on a schedule so you can um, open the scheduled fetcher and you can say oh maybe it's on an FTP server every day and so I go get it every day at 7 a.m. and I can get it from F FTP you can get the file from a lot of different places. You can get it from a Google Sheet every day if you want. Um, so you can automate um, importing that way. Today we're just going to do the manual um, drag on the page. Then it talks about the columns you want. You can filter out bad data if you want. So let's say there's columns that, you know, there's something where you don't want it, like email, you know, must exist for it to import. And then if you save this rule, only, only rows that have the email set will be imported. Uh, virtual fields are fields that don't exist in the CSV that you need to map to MailChimp fields. So maybe uh, you have a field that's like their, you have a bunch of fields that's their name, like first name, middle name, last name, but you need it all in one field. You can combine those fields. Um, you can make a new field like, you know, full name. So you'll say like, oh, I want the first name and the last name, and I want to join it, you know, with a space, and that gives you um, a new field called full name and you can use that and you can do a lot of things with this you can clean clean data you can take the first item from a list there's a lot of different things you can do with virtual fields you can do an if else statement like if email is blank then you know do something so there's a lot of power in virtual fields uh, if you ever need help with virtual fields check our docs or contact uh, support so now if we go back to the import flow we're kind of down to the destination here, and you'll see that we need to choose our audience or list after you've connected your MailChimp account. So let's pick our, let's choose our audience or list. So we go here, and if we've connected MailChimp properly, you'll see here a MailChimp audience list drop down. I only have one list called Easy CSB Newsletter. You might have a bunch of lists. We will say the name and how many contacts are currently in there, um, and you'll just choose that and you'll save. Cool, you go back to your import page. You'll say there's one more step, mapping columns to MailChimp. I'm going to go back to the import flow so you can kind of see there. But you'll see that's the last step here. And this step, you're basically saying, okay, which column in my CSV or virtual field I made should be the MailChimp column, MailChimp field. So in this case, I want email from my CSV to be the email address in MailChimp. I want the status column of my CSV to be the status in, uh, in MailChimp. Uh, Skip merge validation. This is if you have merge tags. So if you have tags that you know will be in your email templates um, and you want to require those so you don't get errors when you import, 
you can set this to true um, or don't set it all it defaults to true you can set it to false if you don't really care and you can use a virtual field to make it false or you can have a column in your CSV to say false VIP status also a boolean true or false uh, so you can put that in your um, spreadsheet or you can make a virtual field that's true or false and map that here like you could if you could make a you know VIP status virtual field and just say false for the static value Language, if you want to set language, got to be a language code like EN or French is FR, Spanish ES, right? Tags is a comma separated list of tags. They do not have to exist in MailChimp first. And then we we show all the merge fields after you select the audience and you've connected your account. So, you know, so for first name and last name, you know, you can do merge fields and phone number. I'll just skip that one. And so this will set those merge fields on import. So we'll save. Cool, and then you're ready. That's it, really. You, you've you've connected your account and you've mapped your fields. So here's my list in Mailchimp. You'll see like here's some merge tags in here, and here's the tags, and we're going to import Mickey. So I'm going to drag that file back onto here. We'll test those validate, and then we'll import. And what'll happen is it'll take a second to actually start the import, and then you'll get an email with the results, which I'll show in the browser here. So here's an example of um, the result, and so. The import was sent to MailChimp. So we've sent a bulk request to MailChimp. We don't know if it's uh, succeeded or failed yet. Uh, MailChimp will take its time working through. Like if you just tried to import 10,000 emails, it'll take a little bit of time. It does it asynchronously. So we go back to the import page. You can refresh and you can see the result here. Then you'll want to like, you know, wait a second. And if you refresh, you should start seeing them come in if you've done like a huge import. So we see Mickey Mouse is here. We see it's got the tags that have been split, right? So like the tags were a comma separated list here. They were split into actual tags. Um, this didn't, there was no status actually set even though we mapped the column in Easy CSV and it de defaults to subscribed. Um, and you only set the merge fields that we set it to. So pretty simple but powerful as you can import tons of records. Um, you always want to check your results in MailChimp because EasyCSV literally just queues up a huge uh, asynchronous job for MailChimp to add people or update people on an email list. And we're working on a way to show you the actual results from MailChimp, but for now you're going to have to check MailChimp for uh, the results. And that's it. Thanks, contact support if you need any help.